Are you a motoring enthusiast? Does your current insurer understand your passion? At Shannon's, we're motoring enthusiasts, just like you. We understand the passion you have for your special car or bike. But did you know that Shannon's will also insure your daily drive, the car you drive every day? So if you're a motoring enthusiast, you've got to be with Shannon's. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Gasoline is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, and the following sponsors. I'm Michael Curzon, producer creator of Gasoline. Hope you enjoy. Hello, Joshua, Olivia, and Sonia. Bumblebee saying hi from Vegas. This is Officer Jay Rivera with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, and you're watching Gasoline. Well, look at who I found here, none other than Troy Tapania from Rad Rides. Troy, fantastic to see you. What an event this is. Yeah, I tell you, Seema, I've been coming here since 90, and I tell you, you know, there's a talk about this economy thing and all that. I mean, you, you, you know yourself, look at the aisles, it's full. So, uh, luckily, no recession in our industry. It's absolutely out of control, and it takes days just to get around here, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, when you bring these cars, and the more you come here, and the more people you know, you know, people ask me, hey, did you see this, did you see that, you know, and I never get anywhere, so it's hard to see anything, so I'll come in at night, and I mean, you got to run these halls to get through here in two days, so it's really amazing how big it's got. You know, when I came here in 90, it was just this building, and it was probably three quarters full, so it's really grown. Wow. Tell us about this latest ride behind us here that you've actually built. Tell us all about this car. You know, I tell you, we've been going to Bonneville now since 07. We have our blowfish car. We went 320 mile hour in, and I always wanted to get more involved in that. So um, we're sitting here in a Durali fan booth they got behind us, and we built this 33 Roadster for Mark and Dennis Mariani. Neat deal. Two brothers uh, built it for them. We started in November, nine month project, really rocked through it. Wind tunneled the car at Chrysler chassis down at our shop, down at the wow. motor, you know, so it's it was very prepared. Went out this summer in August, ran 10 passes on it, kind of shook it down, got them comfortable. Went back in October, set two records. Got Mark and Dennis in the two club. You got to set a record above 200 mile an hour. So we put 10 mile an hour on each record, and they both got the red hat and they're in a 200 mile an hour club. So it was a very successful year with it. But it's a 250 cubic inch. It's very small, two and a half inch stroke. So 10,000 RPM uh, deal, and I uh, went 216, uh, and 214 were the records. So. What's, the, what's the base of the engine? What's the base engine? Uh, the, it's just all aftermarket block stuff, you know, dart, dart heads. It's so a Chevy base? Yeah, Chevy yep. base. It's yep. Pinella. A lot of guys know Bob Pinella. They uh, used yep. to do a lot of pro stock truck racing. Uh, they built the engine, and we built the whole car. So it's uh, 
it's uh, you know we try to we we read we read between the lines in the rule book, so it's uh, it, it got a lot of people's eyes opened up. So it's a really short stroke, big ball, big RPM thing. Yeah, if it ain't going 10,000, it ain't doing nothing. So. And what sort of horsepower is it making? Uh, we made about 630 with it, so it's naturally aspirated. So um, what's kind of nice, so next year we're going to put a bigger motor in it, just go one class up, and we're only two mile an hour off the next class records already, and we'll probably pick up about 100 horsepower. So. If everything goes right in the next couple of years, we should have eight, ten records with it. So, so would you use exotic fuels, big compression ratios, really highly strung engine? Yeah, you know, this is top shelf parts. I mean, the Buzzum, you know, we were putting 19 passes on this engine. You know, that's, and then it's five mile course, so, you know, 100 miles at 10,000 RPM this motor went this summer. So, it was, uh, it was pretty good. And tell us about your other spectacular build, the Corvette. We brought a 58 Corvette down in the Eaton booth and uh, very, we kind of did like a, if, uh, you know, if, if Europe or Italy would have got a hold of a 58 vet at the time, what would they do? Don't lose the car, but just upscale it. So that's kind of what we try to do. It's all C6 Corvette suspensions and LS3, little blower on it. We made a nice little cover, but just kind of, it's got pearl brown and black and just really upscaled it, dialed all the trim in. And, you know, there's so many of them you see here, Corvettes are popular and nice. You see a lot of hot rods, a lot of restores. So we just trying to find a spot in the middle there where it was just kind of a little more upscale. Fantastic, mate. I've always been a massive fan of your work. It's so great to talk to you here at SEMA, and thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now here's an event to mark on your calendar for 2013, the Gasoline Muscle Car Expo. There's never been an event like this one, where some of Australia's very best concourse American and Australian muscle cars come together under one roof. Also featured by special invitation, barn finds, street machines, special interests and 50s classics. So if you want to see the best of the best and cars you've never seen before all under one roof, then this is the show for you. 12th to 14th of July 2013, Royal Exhibition Buildings in Melbourne. Don't miss it. And don't forget viewers to look up the all new Shannon's Club. Shannon's Club is a huge site, it's like a hub for enthusiasts. You jump on there, you can start your own garage, put pictures of your cars up there, stories of your cars, videos, you name it. You'll see people like myself on there, Jim Richards, click on our garages and check out some of our machines and some of our past machines. It's an incredible site, it's growing every day, so get onto it and have a ball. Well, we couldn't miss out on the MSD stand here at SEMA. You all know about their atomic EFI system. You've seen it on the show. It's absolutely sensational. And guess what they've got now? They've got the new wireless LS system. With Russell Stevens here. Russell, tell us about this fantastic new system. Well, last year, uh, MSD came to the SEMA show. We introduced our atomic throttle body system, which was a hit. We won an award and uh, was an excellent seller for us in 2012. We've backed it up this year with the atomic LS. Uh, using the same principles as we discussed last year with the TBI, where we did the we put the electronics and combined them into the side of the throttle body. That's what we've done with the Atomic LS, the big, big GM harness that comes with it that required to run an LS engine. That's gone. The ECU is gone. We put all the electronics inside of the fuel rails right here. And uh, it's got the computer, it runs the fuel, it runs the ignition. It's a self-learning system. So once uh, you've got a little handheld controller, you'll answer some basic questions in there. It's an LS3 or LS7. You can customize it if you would like. And when you get done with it, it's a self-learning system. It runs off of the wideband O2 sensor. And, uh, and it tells the system exactly where to run and the fuel ratio adjusts itself and eliminates the harness, eliminates the, the, uh, the ECU, and it's all a compact little system right here. So really this is an absolute dream for those guys wanting to go retro, where they want to put an engine like this in their rod or their, their olden day muscle car right. or something like that, it's perfect. Yeah, the LS engine is, a, is very, very popular for any of the installations into an older car. We recognize that. What we wanted was uh, us to make the system simple and to make it so that aesthetically it looks good. And, uh, and we've accomplished that by reducing the wiring, eliminating the ECU, and then we've got coil covers that will go over the engine that can be customized to the, to the uh, customer so he can have it match his engine or match his car the way he would like. 
Fantastic, mate. Well, once again, MSD shines through when it comes to innovation. Thanks very much for talking to us. Okay, thank you, and uh, MSD products are available at Rocket. To download your free copy of the Rocket Industries and Aeroflow Performance Parts catalogues, go to the sponsor section at the Gasoline website. Click on the links and download away. With over 650 combined pages of performance parts and accessories, you're sure to find everything you need for your car. You're watching Gasoline. Well, there's no shortage of Mopar muscle here with Chris Duggan here in his beautiful 70 Dodge Charger. Chris, fantastic car. Oh, Tell you. the viewers about it. Yeah, so the car is called Punishment. And uh, what we wanted to do was take a, uh, an original car and modernize everything, make it uh, an, you know, an, an, an enjoyable to drive, but then really kind of buff the ugly out, uh, modernize it, make it sleek, take the chrome off the car, and uh, just you know, have a really modern example of a pro touring Charger. And tell us about the running gear in the car. So it's got a 6.1 Hemi, uh, and you know it's got all the all the fixings, right? So disc brakes and you know modern suspension. So it drives like a new car, but it looks like an old car. And uh, you know one of the things that we spent a lot of time on was uh, restoring and really modernizing the interior. So you know take a look at the interior when you can. Uh, it's uh, it looks OEM, but it looks like a brand new car. I love that whole look and theme, I really do. And did you do much of the restoration work on the car yourself? Uh, so if you mean uh, sending the checks to the builder, then uh, <laughs> yes, I did all of the work. Uh, no, but so uh, the builder uh, is uh, Salvaggio Designs, uh, based in Milwaukee, uh, and then Upholstery Unlimited did the interior. Uh, and so I was involved in really kind of like the brainstorming on the design and kind of how to think through what, what we wanted out of the car, but those guys did all the work. That's a nice position to be in if you can do that. It's yeah. great. You know, to, and to still be involved in the build and, and d direct it basically at the end of the yeah. day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the way I look at it is, you know, so yeah, they sent me photos every week while we were building the car. The car took about a year and a half to build. Uh, and every week they sent photos of progress, and it was like Christmas morning every, every week. <laughs> Just opening up the, you know, the photos and seeing the progress that they'd made. Now, some of the viewers out there back home in Australia might be a bit surprised, but you are actually Australian, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. So I'm a Sydney boy, and uh, you know I've lived here for 30 years, so I've lost the accent. But uh, uh, yeah, so I make, try to make it back as often as I can. Well, thank you so much for talking to us, Chris. It's a beautiful car and a pleasure to talk to you, mate. Wonderful. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank All you. Right. All right. Well, look who I found here, none other than Sherry Westrich from Overhauling. Sherry, it's great to see you here. What a show this is. Yeah, SEMA is always crazy. I've been here almost every year for the last 10 years, and it's crazy in Vegas. And how have you been going with some of these fantastic builds? Uh, it's been going really good. We just started season six, and we're on our fifth car, and we're actually building it here at SEMA. So we're going crazy. We've got, in the South Hall, we've got a Chrysler 300, and we've painted it last night. It's just about to go back together. It's been a lot of work, so I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> and what's your job in overhauling? What sort of work do you do mainly? What's your speciality? Well, my speciality is the dashes and the wiring, do the gauges, and um, just about everything else on the car. So I do welding, I do fabrication, body work, just about anything that you can do to a hot rod. So you're very versatile, well, you cover a very wide that. range. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <Yeah. laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's, it's, it's fantastic to meet you, and I noticed Chip is absolutely bombarded. Yeah, he, he gets it crazy here, especially at SEMA. He's just signing autographs at all times. He's being followed by about 40 or 50 people everywhere he goes. It's, it gets crazy. He can't move. No, he can't, <laughs> but he loves it. He loves talking to people. He loves meeting everybody. I mean, these are his people. I mean, these are the people that are into cars, and, you know, so that's his, that's his true love is talking to the people. I must say in Australia, it's, it's similar for us, not quite the following that Chip gets here, but it's so great to talk to our fans and relate to them and, and just talk cars. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've been to Australia three times and I love it so much and I'm, I'm picking up on your accent now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's great. I, I love it there. And uh, you know who I've met in Australia is a lot of Mopar fans. And I am a big Mopar I fan. I love Mopar. So. Yeah, you do. All right. I love them all. Yeah, I love them all, but Mopar is my passion. And so 
Yeah, I love Australia. Well, 426 Hemi, <laughs> piston and rider assembly here, go. so you're talking into the right mic. So. Right. But thank you very much for talking to us, Sherry. Yeah, it's been no an problem. absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure meeting you. <laughs> thank you yeah. very much. All right, see you in Great Australia. Great work. Thank you. Well, for you fans out there that like Chevy pickups, I've found the one for you. With Murray Hoover here and his beautiful pickup, tell us all about the car, Murray. Oh boy, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> we started out about two and a half years ago with a, it's a 72 cab with a big back window and we put the 67 front sheet metal on it. And uh, we chopped the top two inches and took the drip rail off and suicided the doors and did large radiuses on the bottom of it. When we chopped the top, we laid the A-pillars back. So looking at it from the side, you have an aerodynamics to it. It's, it's, it's been two, two and a half years of solid work with this, uh, with this truck. It, and it's all steel. There's no fiberglass in it whatsoever. Uh, that takes real skill, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of time, yes, but it takes the skill to do it. And tell us about the drivetrain in the car. It's unique, isn't it? Yeah, we took a uh, an L. We took a, a started with an 06 Chevrolet truck, and we we did the LS motor uh, with the Hillborn stack injectors and the Sanderson headers and the Vintage Air front runner, and we took a 4L60E uh, transmission and used the HGM CompuShift computer to to operate the transmission and went on back and put a 10-bolt, uh, a narrow to 10-bolt Chevrolet truck rear end rather than a 9-inch Ford. <laughs> but I wanted to keep Kept it Chevy. All, I wanted to keep it all Chevrolet. And along with the vintage air conditioning system in the car, you've also got a very unique wiring and operation system, haven't you? Tell us about that. Uh, our wiring system is a new system out, and it's ISIS, I-S-I-S, power systems. We have a touch screen involved in the dash. There are no switches in this truck at all. It's, it, the ignition turns on, we start it, the lights turn on and off, the windows go up and down, the doors open, the air conditioner, the vintage air air conditioner, all operates off the ISIS power system. It's a, it's a really, really nice updated system. We have a touch button transmission shifter, so there's eight ECUs in this truck. And that's pretty good for a guy that does carburetors and distributors, you know. And DuPont paint. I really want to mention DuPont. They've been very good to us, but DuPont is, this is a new candy apple red that they did and the, a cosmic dust upper silver. We painted the whole truck the cosmic silver first, the cosmic dust at first, and then came over it with this new candy apple red that DuPont Hot Hughes has. And I mean, it explodes outside. It's in spectacular. The, in the it? sunlight, it's, it'll, it just knocks you out. It, it's gorgeous. So. Well, Maury, thank you so much for talking to us. Beautiful car. It's a real credit to you, the build. And thank you so much for talking to us. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. watching gasoline. Well viewers, I've found an absolutely spectacular 69 Yanko 427 Camaro. But this is no replica. This is the real deal. Now, Steve DiMercurio here was actually involved in a lot of work that was done on this car. Steve, it's a beautiful car. Tell us about it. Well, I tell you what, the, the owner of the car, I wish he was here. He could tell you a lot more than I could. But the owner is Reggie Jackson, the famous retired baseball player, a legend for the Yankees. And uh, he acquired the car about 25 years ago. And it more or less uh, 
stayed in an incubated state of protection for the last 25 years until just a few weeks ago when we were alerted to bring the car here to help promote Classic Industries and the OER brand. And uh, it was just a couple hundred hours ago that if you'd seen the car, it would have looked just a little bit less than it does today. So it was an older restoration and you've brought it back up to scratch again. Yeah, the paint and body work is 25 years old. So it really needed just machine polishing to bring it right back because it had been well cared for. And uh, the engine, the drivetrain, the transmission, the rear axle assembly was all the original stuff in running condition. So it more or less had seen oxidation throughout the body, throughout the interior of the engine bay. And we just kind of brought it back to what it would have been 1969 coming right off the assembly line. You've done a fantastic job now. These 427 Yankos, tell us about the power plant. How they arrive stock from the Yanko deal. Yeah. Well, it's interesting enough that these cars were released from the Chevrolet uh, motor division as 427s. So you had to literally order that car. It was as easy as ordering the car, checking the box. You wanted the 427, 425 horsepower engine. And when it showed up, it was missing the decals, the rims, and the spoilers. But that is what you got in 1969 if you wanted a 427 Camaro. So Don Yenko finished them off, put his own stickers on them and... Kind of personalized it for his Chevy dealership yep. at the time. And uh, his daughter, interestingly enough, applied the graphics to, to all the 69 Yankos. And she was quite young, wasn't she? Yeah, just about 16 at the time is what I heard. You know, some of the other details, like the rims and tires, were conveniently added in the back shop, you know, but the cars were delivered from Chevrolet as 14-inch rims, the five-spoke steel wheel, and Don Yanko thought the American racing was much more attractive, and then used the Z28 tire, the 15-inch tire, what you see there, the wide track GT, and it really made for a winning combination, you know, on and off the track. And just for the viewers out there that may not know what a Yanko Camaro is, these vehicles are quite valuable, aren't they? I've heard of uh, figures between three and $400,000 yeah. being fetched for these cars. Yes, it's not uncommon to see them in that range. You know, uh, the attention to detail, accuracy, originality, paperwork involved will help secure the $400,000 range. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for talking to us. It's been great to look at the car. I really appreciate your time. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you for interviewing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We'll see you again soon. See you later. watching gasoline. Modern Plating for all your plating needs with over 50 years experience in delivering quality to the automotive restoration industry. Whether it be bumpers, die cast, polishing and repairs to aluminium or stainless steel mouldings, even ceramic coatings, Modern Plating have you covered. See modernplating.com.au located at 4 to 6 King Street in Oakley, Victoria. Modern Plating, when quality matters. Well, if you're into Dodge Darts, I've found an absolute killer here. And under the hood, it's packed full of Hemi Big Block. It's owned by Bob Kyle here. Bob, tell us all about the car. Well, I've had it for about eight years. It was uh, totally a stock car with a little slant six, three on the tree, no power equipment whatsoever. And I decided to make it into a Hemi Dart. And I uh, bought a crate motor and did the interior, had it painted, 
and really have been enjoying it for the last six years. Now, you know, now I've got a little for sale sign on it and ready to kind of do another project, but I still love this one, and if I don't sell it, I'll, I'll be still happy with it. If you do sell it, there's going to be a very lucky owner out there. I know why it would be. Is it 426 cubic inch, Emmy? It's actually a 472 crate motor, 525 horsepower, and, and about the same on the torque. And trans and rear end? Uh, automatic, uh, trans, three speed, and then the rear end is the eight and three quarter with some good parts in it for strength. So we got our build up pretty strong and uh, everything's working really good. Have you raced the car at all or mainly street work? I have taken it down the strip one time. It ran 12 flat at about 119. That's a good mile per hour. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm really happy with it. It's yeah. a low compression motor and, you know, at this altitude, I thought it was a pretty good number. Yeah, well, mile per hour wise, it's deep into the 11s, very low yeah. 11s, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at sea level, it definitely run, you know, 1170s. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Did you much of the work on the car yourself? I did as much as I could other than the paint and the interior. I put the motor, tranny, rear end, everything I did myself, suspension, rebuilt the front end, and um, you know, just did everything I could do possibly by myself. So I could say I did most of it. <laughs> and how did you go obtaining parts for the car? It wasn't bad. Um, you know, I had most of the parts rebuffed, and the bumpers are original, and I just buffed them out, and the grill and everything was in good shape. And the interior I got from Legendary, which they supply the original style interior. And uh, so getting parts were, wasn't too bad. Well, Bob, fantastic. Yeah. Thanks so much for talking to us. It's a beautiful car, an Thank angry looking car too. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I enjoyed doing the interview. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay. See you next week for more gasoline. <laughs> <laughs>